Questions 21 through 25 on the 2019 Grade 7 Goss Math Contest. Kathy owns more cats than Alice and more dogs than Bruce. Alice owns more dogs than Kathy and fewer cats than Bruce. Which of the following statements must be true? Let's write this out. So the amount of dogs that Kathy has, I'll call that KC, is greater than the amount of cats that Alice has. Completely according to the question stem. I'm not adding anything new. And then they're comparing Kathy with Bruce. And they're saying that the amount of cats, or sorry, the amount of dogs that Kathy has is more than the amount of dogs that Bruce has. So this is the first part. The next sentence talks about Alice. Alice owns more dogs than Kathy. Okay. And then fewer cats than Bruce. So fewer cats than Bruce. Okay, so this is basically the inequalities based entirely on the question stem. So we got to combine them, right? Okay, so the dogs, I think I can. KD goes in the middle, and Alice is greater. And who's less? Bruce, right? Okay. And for the cats, unfortunately, there isn't a perfect sort of continuum because both uh, Kathy and Bruce have more cats. So we don't know between Kathy and Bruce who's got more. Okay, let's go through the answer choices. B Bruce owns the fewest cats. Well, that can't be true because he has more cats than Alice. That's out. Bruce owns the most cats. We don't know that for sure. He, we know he owns, owns more cats than Alice, but we don't know how he compares with Kathy. So that is not something we can be confident about. Kathy owns the most cats. Uh, she owns actually the least cats. Alice owns, owns the most dogs. The answer is yeah. She does. And let's just finish it out. Kathy owns the fewest dogs. She owns the middle. I guess in the, in the ranking, she's in the middle. So of the answer choices, the one that must be true is D for number 21. Each of the integers 334 and 419 have digits whose product is 36. How many three-digit positive integers have digits whose product is 36? Okay, so we have A, B, and C as my integers. This is my three-digit number. And I've got to figure out a situation where when I multiply them together, they're going to equal 36 because 36 is what? 1 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Okay, so we just got to fiddle around with this. Okay, if A is 1, B can be 4, and C can be 9. If A is 1, B can be 6, C can be 6. So for each of these, we have to figure out how many different ways, how many different permutations. For the first guy, there will be 6 different ways, right? I'll just write it out. 1, 4, 9... 1, 9, 4 for those three numbers. You can also have 4, 1, 9, or 4, 9, 1. Or you can have 9, 1, 4, or 9, 4, 1. So as you can see, those are 6. For this, you only get three permutations. I'll just write this, and then I won't write any more permutations just because I think you'll figure it out. So 1, 6, 6, 6, 1, 6, or 6, 6, 1, like that. Okay. Let's keep going here. I think we've exhausted the ones. Let's try two for A. If A is two, we can have two and nine. And I think two with six and three, that will work. This will give me three permutations. This will give me th uh, six, six, because there's three different numbers here. Okay, now let's go to the next one, three for A. That way I can get three and four, and this will give me three permutations. Now, at this point, any other thing that I write will be already included. So this is, these are the only unique ones. So now I just have to add up these guys. And when I do, I get uh, 21. So that's the answer. Number 22, the answer is A. Points T, U, V, W, X, Y lie on the square P, Q, R, S as shown. If P, T is equal to T, U is equal to U, K, U, Q is equal to QV is equal to VW, WRXS, SY. What fraction of the area of square PQRS is shaded? 
Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, so I will show you a little bit of a time-saving trick. Not necessarily a trick, but here we go. Divide this into regions, right? And I'll try to do it in a way that is um, easy to understand. So as you can see, I just drew the lines there. And then we're going to basically make every region look exactly the same by drawing these diagonals. And because these regions that I just created all have equal dimensions, all of those triangles that I create will be equal. And I think that is it, right? Yeah, that, well, one more, one more down here. Okay. So let's talk about this. How many of these triangles did I create? And in particular, I'm talking about a triangle that looks like that. Well, there's one, two, three, four in each of those squares, and there's nine squares. So there's four times nine, so 36, 36 of those. 36 triangles that look like this. Now all you have to do is just count the ones that are shaded. Simple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 of the 36 are shaded. And you see how easy it becomes when you do it like that? And anytime you have a system that saves time, saves time you should definitely use it. So in lowest terms, this will be 5 over 18, and that's the answer. Number 23. It would be A. A dot starts at 2019. It can move one unit vertically or horizontally to one of the points 21, 19, 19, 19, 20, 20, or 2018. From there, it can move two units in either direction that is perpendicular to the first move. All moves thereafter increase in length by one unit. 3 units, 4 units, 5 units, etc. And then must be perpendicular to the direction of the previous move. The dot stops after 10 moves. Which of the following final locations is not possible? So let's talk about this. We are starting at 2019, right? That's the uh, coordinate. And then we have to complete the full 10 moves. The dot stops after 10 moves. So we've got to go through all 10. Now at each move, it's either 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on in terms of how much it increases or decreases by or, uh, or not at all. Now, for each of these, it could either go up uh, across in the x direction or it can go up or down in the y direction for 1, 2, and so on. And it can either go uh, plus 1, minus, or 0. Similarly, plus, minus, or 0. Plus, minus, 0, and so on for each of them. Okay, so we have to figure out of the answer choices which one is not possible. So this is one of those painful trial and error. If you've got a system, by all means use it. So let's talk about this one at a time. Let's start with answer choice A. Our XY has to go to 2733. So that means my X, we started at 20, so I've got to go plus 7 for the X. And for the Y, it looks like plus 14, right? Okay. So how do I get that? Well, I'm going to go 1 uh, plus 1, that is, for the X. I'm going to choose a plus 3 here. Uh, plus 5, a plus 7, and a minus 9. That would bring me to 7, right? Because it's 4, 9, 16, and then 16 minus 9 is 7. Okay. Now, when I choose those, these ones have to be 0. Because remember, I can only go in one direction. If I went up, I'm not going to go left or right. If I went down, I'm not going to go left or right. If I go left, I can't go up or down. If I go right, I can't go up or down. So if I choose a horizontal move, then the vertical move is zero, and vice versa. Okay, so now let's talk about the y direction, which is going up or down, which is uh, vertical. It would be obviously to the involving the 2, but it would be minus involving the 4, plus, minus 6, plus 8, and plus 10. If you add up those, 
We had 18, 4 is uh, 22, 22 minus 8 is 14, and that's what we have. So as you can see, we've got to figure out this, and uh, when we do, we can see that 2733 can be reached. So therefore, it is possible, so that's not one of the, that's not the answer choice. All right, so let's keep going in the exact same way. 30, 40 is the next one. This time, I've got to go 10 plus and 21 plus for the x and y directions. And let's see, how do we make this one? For the x, it's going to be plus 2, minus 4, minus 6, plus 8, and plus 10. That would give me... 18 minus 10 or minus sorry 22 or 20 minus 10 <laughs> I can't even add 20 minus 10 and that gives me 10 okay now I've got to figure out the y's right so the numbers are 1 I don't know plus or minus I'm just going to write the numbers 1 3 5 7 and 9 and if you fiddle around with these you'll find there's no way to get a 21 no matter if it's plus or negative, it's got to be plus or minus. It can't be zero because, remember, these are zeros up here. Cause so we've got to have either a plus or minus for each of these. And you'll see when you fiddle around with that, there's no way to get 21. And therefore, because there's no way to get 21, this is not possible. So because it's not possible, that is the answer. And just for the sake of completion, I will write out the ways to get the other three choices, which are 21, 21, 42, 44, and 37, 37. So here we go. For 21, 21, that's what? Plus 1 and plus 1. So that's pretty straightforward. And therefore, it would be 1 minus 3 plus 5 plus 7 minus 9. And then in the y direction, plus 2, plus 4, minus 6, minus 8, and plus 10. So that is what? Uh, plus 2, which is what we had to do because we had to go from 19 to 21. So it actually was plus 2. All right, for this guy, 22 and 25, x and y. And that is the combinations to get the 22 and 25. And the last one is plus 17 and plus 18. And that is how you would get those. So it's uh, really a, a lot of trial and error, and I really commend those students who got this correct uh, because it's actually quite time-consuming to go through every single possible way of getting this and getting that. And uh, So hopefully that made sense, and therefore number 24, the answer is B. An 8 by 8 by n rectangular prism is made up from 1 by 1 by 1 cubes. Suppose that A is the surface area of the prism and B is the combined surface area of the 1 by 1 by 1 cubes that make up the prism. What is the sum of the values of n for which B over A is an integer? I will first start off with a simple example. Let's say n is 2. And hopefully this example will make you understand how to approach this question. So in this case, if n is 2, it will be an 8 by 8 by 2 dimension rectangular prism. And that area is 128. Now it's made up of these unit cubes. Each has an area of 1. So it will be 128 unit cubes in this scenario. Now the surface area, which they are calling A, of the prism will be as follows. It'll be 2 times 8 by 8 plus 2 times 8 by 2 plus 2 times 8 by 2. So I just drew what it could look like, that prism. Okay, so let's figure this out now. This would be, in terms of numbers, 192. Now let's figure out B, which they are calling the combined surface area of the unit cubes. Well, there's 128 of them, and each of them would have a surface area of 6, since it's just basically a unit cube with each side uh, being 1 by 1. So there you go. 
So that would mean 128 times 6 is 768. So what is B over A in this case? B over A would be 768 over 192, and that is 4. Is that an integer? Yes. So that is how we approach this question. Now let's do the exact same thing, but instead of n being 2, n is just n. So now we have 8 by 8 by n, and that is 64n. That is the number of unit cubes that make up this particular prism. Our surface area of the cube would be 2 times, again, 8 times 8. That's the bottom of the base of the prism. Then it would be 2 times 8 times n this time, plus 2 times 8 times n. So this is 128 plus 32n. Okay. Now b, well, that's very easy. That's just going to be... Um, the number of unit cubes, which is 64n, times 6, which is just 384n. Okay, so now what is my b over a? It is 384n over 128 plus 32n. I think I can divide through by 32, and when I do, I get 12n over 4 plus n. All right, so this this is very, very nice. I, I think I can work with this without too much problem. I've got to start plugging in values of n so that this becomes an integer. Okay, I, I'm sure I can do that. Let's make a table and proceed. So we got n, and then we have 12n over 4 plus n. So this is, at this point, just plug and play. Let's try 1. When you get 1, for n, you get 12 over 5. Is 12 over 5 an integer? No. You try 2. That's 24 over 6, and that is an integer because that is equal to 6. So we circle that. That was actually the one I did in the example. I used n equals 2. So we know that's going to be an integer. And you just keep going like this. 3, and it's going to be 36 over 7. That's not an integer. And then 4. 4 is 48 over 8, and that is an in integer, it is equal to 6. So circle 4 as a value for n. And you just keep going like this. So I'm not going to bore you by going through every single one. I'm just going to write the ones for which this becomes an integer. And it is time consuming, but uh, that's the way it is since it's number 25. 8 works. It gives you 96 over 12, which is equal to 8. Therefore, that works in terms of giving you an integer value. The next one that works is 12 for the value of n. It gives you 144 over 16, which is equal to 9. 9 is, of course, an integer. The next one that works after a lot of uh, numbers that don't work is 20. You have to get all the way up to 20. 20 240 over 24, and that's 10. And then you get really painful You've got to keep trying until 44 to get the next value of n. And that gives me a uh, integer value of 11. And at that point, it's finished, you know, thankfully. And now you just have to add up the values of n that worked. So 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 20 plus 44. And that's uh, 90. So that is the answer, and that's B. Now you might say, well, how do you know that you have to stop at 44? How, why didn't you just keep going here, 45, 46, and so on? Because if I did, my sum would be greater than 90. It would be much greater than 90. It would be at least 45 greater than 90, and there's no answer choice that is that big. So you're, you can be confident that 90 is indeed the right answer. So number 25, that would be B.